My name is James Bean. Today's program is program number 601 in the CHSR HealthyLife.net series. Today, Gnostic Spiritual Practice. The Ascension Mysticism of the Soul Process described in the Gnostic Gospels of Nag Hammadi. And then later on, I'll delve into the subject of the ignored Gnostic Gospels. In recent years, the Gospel of Thomas, Gospel of Mary Magdalene, Gospel of Judas, and others from the Nag Hammadi Library Discovery have gotten some attention, and that's a good thing. But there is a kind of shallow media and social media process at work here. If a text is recently discovered, it will make headlines. Newspapers and websites are looking for content and sometimes we'll do stories about these recent discoveries. And then social media will start to talk about those discoveries. This may lead eventually to some cable or TV network of some sort, satellite network, producing specials about them that typically air around Christmas or Easter. But what if there are writings that are outside this system, this way of doing. Writings that would be big news and would be very exciting if they were being discovered now, but they're not new. They've been sitting on library shelves for decades or even centuries in some case. In some cases. What if there are discoveries that have been made in the past before the age of the Internet? satellite TV and cable channels. Those are not subject to the process. These are off the radar screen. These are ignored texts. Not part of the system because not everyone does research. Not everyone does their homework. Not everyone collects books. Not everyone delves into the subject of Gnosticism, goes to libraries and explores these other writings that take a bit more effort to find. The ignored Gospels, I'll give you some glimpses into other texts that have been discovered over the years that have some fantastic, deep, spiritual things to say. A whole treasure trove, many different treasure troves of, of sacred literature. We'll delve into that. The ignored Gospels. But first, spiritual practice of the Gnostics, the Gnostic Gospels of Nag Hammadi and other Gnostic texts. Dr. Andrea Diem Lane, in her wonderful book, The Gnostic Mystery, A Connection Between Ancient and Modern Mysticism, says something very interesting about the Gnostic universe, the Gnostic system described in various texts. Quote, it appears from various Gnostic sources that there are a variety of inner realms, each with a specific ruling power. According to one Gnostic writer in the Nag Hammadi book of Zostrianos, there are five basic realms, the fifth being the realm of the divine, encompassing all the others. This Gnostic explains that he withdrew into himself and ascended through various regions, being baptized or initiated in each, until finally he reached the fifth aeon, the fifth plane or heavenly realm. The Gnostic Mystery, a connection between ancient and modern mysticism by Professor Andrea Diem Lane. Five Hebrew sacred names embedded in otherwise Coptic language texts. That's pretty fascinating, isn't it? The language of the Nag Hammadi Gospels is Coptic. It's the language of Egyptian Christianity. Coptic, a language somewhat related to Greek, is also the language of Gnostics and various sects in antiquity in Egypt. Especially in 
Nag Hammadi books that are categorized as Sethian do we find Hebrew sacred names turning up from time to time. The Sethians were a Jewish Gnostic sect, perhaps the founding sect or one of the early, or you know, mother church of Gnosis, if you will, one of the early groups. And several of the Nag Hammadi texts are Sethian. In one of the Jewish Gnostic paths of antiquity, a group known as the Sethians, there was a five named mantra system. Five Hebrew names that play a very central role presenting a Gnostic universe, the Gnostic reality and spiritual system of the ascension of the soul through those realms to get to the fifth region. Hebrew name number one corresponds to the first heaven, the second name corresponds to the second heaven, the third name corresponds to the third heaven, or inner region, or realm, or plane, call it what you will. The fourth name, El Elith, that refers to the fourth region, and the fifth name refers to the divine, all-encompassing light that is beyond. These five names are Hebrew, these five names correspond to five heavens. They are names of five heavenly realms. They are also the names of five heavenly lights, suggesting that there is a visionary component, that there is a kind of light or vision that one sees that is associated with each of these heavenly realms. And these five Gnostic names five Gnostic sacred names are names of presiding deities or some divine ruler of each of these realms. Now there, there may be other ways of looking at that. For instance, there may be understood in the Gnostic system five levels of the one God. You know, God at the first level, God in the second heaven, God in the third, God in the fourth, and God in the fifth. Perhaps that's the case. Or they are presiding deities, you know, one for each of the heavens. Or another way to look at it perhaps might be that these are five metaphors for blobs of light, different kinds of visionary things that are seen by the soul as it travels through these regions. In any case, these five names are very important to the process of the ascension of the soul through these different states of consciousness on the way back to God again. These sacred Hebrew names which correspond to five heavenly regions or planes are also words of power. By repeating various sacred names while concentrating in the darkness, the energies of the soul that normally are scattered and dissipated into the world of the five senses are gathered together at the single eye. With this singleness of vision, concentration at the third eye center, or mind's eye, light will appear. One will begin to rise above body consciousness and begin the interior voyage of spiritual ascension, accompanied by the radiant form of the Master. The following reading comes from a Sethian Gnostic or Jewish mystical text called Trimorphic Proto-Noa one of the most important books of the Nag Hammadi Library Discovery of Egypt. He who possesses the five seals of these particular names has stripped off the garments of ignorance, the material body and the subtle bodies, and put on a shining light. And nothing will appear to him that belongs to the negative powers of the Archons, rulers of lower regions. Within those of this sort, darkness will dissolve and ignorance will die, and the thought of the creature which is scattered will present a single appearance, and dark chaos will dissolve. Until I reveal myself to all my fellow brethren, and until I gather together all of my fellow brethren within my eternal kingdom, and I proclaim to them the five seals, the ineffable five seals, in order that I might abide in them, 
and they also might abide in me. A reading from a Jewish Sethian Gnostic text from the Nag Hammadi Library called Trimorphic Proto-Noah about this ascension of the soul process and how these names are associated with this ascension and the manifestation of inner light. The third eye and inner light. A saying of Jesus from Matthew 6.22 in the New Testament, If your eye be single, your whole body will be full of light. It's parallel in the Gospel of Thomas. If one is whole, one will be filled with light. But if one is divided, one will be filled with darkness. The following reading comes from Joseph the Visionary in another collection of texts called the Syriac Fathers on Prayer and the Spiritual Life. The impulses of the mind are extended from the sphere of material things towards those impulses which are without limit, that is to say, wonder at the new world and the faculty of vision which belongs to the contemplation of the Holy Trinity. For when the vision of the mind is mingled with the light of the glorious Trinity, all its impulses become infinite. For none of the visionaries or Gnostics is able to distinguish the identity of the mind as a result of the vision of that glorious light that is seen. For all the innermost chambers of the heart are filled by that blessed light. And there are no shapes or forms or anything material or number or color. Rather, that light who cannot be separated out into shapes and forms is single, owing to the simpleness of the faculty of sight. Joseph the Visionary, the Syriac Fathers on Prayer and the Spiritual Life, representing another collection of writings. In antiquity, we have several collections of writings that represent different spiritual communities. The Dead Sea Scrolls represent the Essene branch of Judaism. The Nag Hammadi Library Discover, Discovery is a collection that represents part of the library once used by these Pacomian monks in Upper Egypt, many of which had a very Valentinian Gnostic orientation. The Corpus Hermeticum of Egypt is a collection of writings that represents that community, Hermetic philosophy of Egypt. And the Syriac Fathers on Prayer and the Spiritual Life, as you can tell by the reference to Trinity or Godhead in a triune sort of way, represents another more Christian mystical kind of group, monks who lived in monasteries around Mesopotamia. The Syriac Fathers on Prayer and the Spiritual Life is another collection of uh, texts representing that particular school of thought or community in the ancient world. Back to the singleness of vision with the single eye, focused, seeing with the eye of the soul, spiritual visions of inner light. Man's soul shall become when it leaveth the body, a great flood of light, so as to traverse all the regions until it cometh into the kingdom of mystery. Man's soul shall become, when it leaveth the body, a great flood of light, so as to traverse all the regions, until it cometh into the kingdom of mystery. Seek all of you after the light, so that the power of your soul that is in you may live. Do not cease seeking day or night, until you find the mysteries of the kingdom of light, which will purify you, make you into pure light and lead you into the kingdom of the light. And therefore, or rather thereafter, came a light stream unto me through thee which saved me and shone on my left and on my right. 
and surrounded me on all sides, so that no part of me was without light. And it is thy light stream which hath raised me up, and taken me from the emanations of the self-willed which constrained me. And I have become sure trusting in thy light, and purified light in thy stream. Those are verses from another collection representing another community of Gnostics in antiquity. Those are verses from the book of Pista Sophia, the Gnostic Gospel of Faith Wisdom, another wonderful collection of writings, almost forgotten about, kind of the Nag Hammadi of the uh, Age of Reason or the Enlightenment period, you know, long ago that influenced William Blake once upon a time. Kind of forgotten about, but a very important earlier discovery of Gnostic texts from Egypt. This has all happened before. Many writings have been found over the years, and Pista Sophia was a kind of Nag Hammadi of its day. And here we have these wonderful descriptions about the soul seeing light, being protected by the positive power of that light, and drawn up into heavenly realms as a result of contemplating that inner light. So, inner light, reaching the third eye center, seeing the inner light, becoming one with it, being escorted by it, being drawn up through the heavenly realms by it, is central to Gnostic spirituality, part of the ascension of the soul mysticism present in various Gnostic texts. Inner sound is central as well. Listen within yourself and look into the infinitude of space and time. There can be heard the songs of the constellations, the voices of the numbers, and the harmonies of the spheres. Hermes Trismegistus said in the Corpus Hermeticum of Egypt. Before the Sufi mystics of Islam in ancient times, there were Gnostics, Jewish Hermetic, and Christian mystics who described hearing the sound and seeing mystic visions of light in heavenly realms while in deep states of meditation. In Trimorphic Proto Noah, the Gnostic writer says, I cast a sound into the ears of those who know me and I am inviting you into the exalted perfect light. Moreover, as for this light, when you enter it, you will be glorified. You will become, you will become gloriously glorious the way you first were when you were light. And I hid myself in everyone, and I revealed myself within them. And every mind seeking me longed for me. I am the Word who dwells in the ineffable silence. I am a voice speaking softly. I exist from the first. I dwell within the silence. I am the silence that is incomprehensible. I am the voice whose sound is manifold and the word whose appearance is multiple. I am the hearing which can be attained by everyone. readings from the Nag Hammadi Library, from Thunder, Perfect Mind, and Trimorphic Proto-Noah. This is from the untitled text of the Bruce Codex, another collection of Gnostic scriptures. He is the first father of the all, or universe. He is the first being. He is the first source. He it is whose voice has penetrated everywhere. He is the first sound whereby the all perceived and understood. It is he to whom the universe has come. They were silent before him and have not told of him, for he is beyond speech, beyond thought. So this is the first fountain. It is he whose voice has penetrated in every place. This is the first sound vibrating until the universe feels and understands. A reading from the Bruce Codex, 
about a divine sound that awakens souls from their slumber here in creation and allows them to begin the process of returning back to God once again. This is all part of the ascension process, the repeating of the names, the finding of inner light with the third eye, contemplating the inner light, hearing the inner sound, and focusing all of one's attention on that light and on that sound and being transported by that light and by that sound through these heavenly realms on the way back to God again. And that is what Gnosticism is all about. The ascension of the soul, going back home again. The return to God. You're hearing Spiritual Awakening Radio. Stay tuned for more after these messages. The second half of today's edition of Spiritual Awakening Radio is dedicated to the ignored Gospels that have fallen through the cracks. The Book of the Knowledge or Gnosis of the Invisible God is my first stop today. An unrecognized Dialogues Gospel embedded in the Bruce Codex placed at the beginning of 1st Jeyu or Ayu, the first book of Jeyu or Ayu. This is the book of the knowledge or gnosis of the invisible God by means of the hidden mysteries which show the way to the chosen ones, leading in rest or refreshment to the life of the Father. O my apostles, fulfill my word in relation to me and I myself make you free, and you become whole through a freedom in which there is no blemish. As the spirit of the Comforter is whole, so will you also be whole through the freedom of the spirit of the Holy Comforter." A passage from this unknown Dialogues Gospel called the Book of the Knowledge or Gnosis of the Invisible God. It's in this collection of mostly later, more complex Gnostic initiation or ritual material in the Bruce Codex. But at the very beginning, placed at the very beginning of 1st Jeyu, is this older text, which is something which is very close to what you'd find in the Nag Hammadi Library. Clearly it's an older text a dialogues gospel, which means you have Jesus and you have his disciples and it's kind of a Q&A session with the Master. It's really quite impressive. Why no one has noticed it, why no one has published it as far as I am aware, why no one has pointed it out that clearly they placed an older text at the beginning of first Jeyu or Ayu. And it's a very valuable dialogues gospel. It should be studied, should be added to the rest, you know, should be published along with other texts of similar nature, like Dialogue of the Savior from Nag Hammadi. Why no one's done that? I don't know. I got tired of waiting, so I gave it its own page at Medium, a page called The Book of the Knowledge or Gnosis of the Invisible God, pointing out that at the beginning of 1st Jeyo there is older material Here it is. These first few chapters of Jehu are clearly different from the rest of the text. It's clearly an older dialogues gospel that has a lot of great things to say. The Book of the Knowledge of the Invisible God. There's a book called Coptic Apocrypha 
by E. Wallace Budge. And in it is contained writings that were discovered near another Coptic monastery of Egypt. Quite often in Egypt, there are these discoveries. The Algerna books were found at a monastery. Nag Hammadi was found a couple of miles away from a monastery at a St. Pacomius founded community there near Nag Hammadi. Coptic Apocrypha, edited by E. Wallace Budge, represents another collection of writings found at another spiritual community, a monastery. Makes sense, really. Monks copied writings. It's what they did. They had libraries. Ancient manuscripts are found at most all of uh, the monasteries of Egypt. So, monasteries equals libraries. So, it makes sense. A lot of these discoveries would happen in monasteries, in the walls, hidden behind a, scare, a staircase, or buried, you know, outside, not far from a monastery in Egypt, associated with Coptic Christianity or Syriac Christianity, which also the Syrians have some monasteries there in Egypt. Like St. Catherine's, that's a great place. They have a huge project going on there to reclaim ancient texts. Well, the book Coptic Apocrypha has some instructions by Pacomius. It preserves a book called The Repose of St. John the Evangelist and Apostle and contains a huge book which is very similar to something you might find in the Nag Hammadi Library, very similar, a Gnostic gospel called The Book of the Resurrection by Bartholomew the Apostle, The Book of the Resurrection of Jesus Christ by the Apostle Bartholomew. So that's pretty amazing. There's some good stuff in there. There's some great spiritual instruction in there. You can read it for free at archive.org. Or I can send a link to you. Just listen for my email address. I can send you a link if you can't find it directly by going to the Internet Archive. It's also a hardcover book that some libraries probably can get. A very valuable collection. The Corpus Hermeticum translated by G.R.S. Mead is very valuable. Hermetic philosophy of Egypt is another school of spirituality very closely related to Gnosticism in ancient Egypt. The Nag Hammadi Library discovery represents a collection of the writings of a certain community. Nag Hammadi is a collection of writings found in Upper Egypt, once studied by monks, with a very Valentinian Gnostic orientation. And so the Nag Hammadi is a window, a time capsule, into some of the writings they read long ago, studied long ago, copied long ago. It represents the writings or holy scriptures of an ancient community. Well, the Corpus Hermeticum of Egypt does as well. The writings attributed to Hermes Trismegistus, a number of mystics wrote under the pen name Hermes, and it's a beautiful collection, partly responsible for the Renaissance. It eventually got brought to Europe and translated into various European languages. And also represents, a, you know, a collection of scriptures by an ancient community. Hermetic philosophy of Egypt. After the break, I want to talk about the Thomas literature. Yes, there's the Gospel of Thomas, but there are several other books attributed to the Apostle Thomas as well. You're hearing Spiritual Awakening Radio. Stay tuned for more after these messages. The Thomasine literature deserves some attention as I explore 
the ignored Gnostic Gospels that have fallen through the cracks. The Gospel of Thomas was found at Nag Hammadi in the Coptic language, and there are some parts of it found in Greek at Oxyrhynchus as well. It's a collection of the sayings of Jesus. But there's also the infancy Gospel of Thomas about a young Jesus struggling with his powers, gaining maturity as he grows older. There is a book called The Book of Thomas the Spiritual Athlete, which has a lot of spiritual insight. It's part of the Nag Hammadi Library Discovery, part of the Thomas Collection. There is a book called The Acts of Thomas, which is one of the greatest of apocryphal books, one of the great apocryphal books of all time. Highly influential over the ages. Describing the Apostle Thomas traveling to India. Now, there are a couple of different manuscripts of the Acts of Thomas. One is Latin, which has some of the hymns chopped out, no thank you, and the Syriac manuscript of the Acts of Thomas, which does include, which does preserve all of those gorgeous hymns and poems including the Hem of the Pearl, which may be one of the greatest Gnostic texts ever composed. So, I highly recommend the Syriac edition, which can be found in a book called Apocryphal Acts of the Apostles by William Wright. That one contains not only the complete Syriac edition of the Acts of Thomas, but other interesting books of Acts attributed to other apostles as well. Highly desirable, an amazing book, I highly recommend. Apocryphal Acts of the Apostles by William Wright, containing several books, including the great text known as the Acts of Thomas. There is a book called the Psalms of Thomas, quite beautiful, actually, a beautiful collection of Psalms. And there is a kinder, gentler apocalypse called the Apocalypse of Thomas. That's the Thomas literature that's great to have. A beautiful series of books attributed to the Apostle Thomas. There is the Mandaean Canonical Prayer Book. The Canonical Prayer Book of the Mandaeans, that's the actual title, Canonical Prayer Book of the Mandaeans, by E. S. Drower. Representing a huge collection of hymns by the group of Gnostics known as Mandaeans who were the followers of John the Baptist. It's written originally in a form of the Aramaic language and feels very old. It's really quite impressive, actually. I highly recommend it. If it were just being discovered now, it would be a huge story. But it was translated many decades ago and therefore has missed the opportunity to make headlines and be discussed online and be the object of documentaries on satellite TV networks. The Mandaean Gnostics. The illuminator of the worlds of light. In the name of the great life, sublime light be praised. From the place of light I came forth from you, bright habitation. I come to touch hearts, to measure and try all minds, to see in whose heart I dwell. Whoever thinks of me, of him I think. Whoever calls my name, his name I will call. Whoever prays my prayer from the earth, his prayer I will offer from the place of light. I came and found the truthful and believing hearts. When I was not dwelling among them, yet my name was on their lips. I took them and guided them up to the world of light. I became the illuminator of the worlds of light. I became a king to the Nazareans, 
who receive praise and stability through my name, and by my name they ascend to the place of the light. As for the elect righteous who put me on as a garment, their eyes will be filled with light, and manda dihaya, knowledge of life, was established in their hearts. A reading from the Mandaean scriptures of Iraq, from the canonical prayer book of the Mandaeans, translated by E. S. Drower. The role of the heavenly messenger is to give the mystic experience of light to souls and eventually guide them back up to the place of light, the Mandaean term for one of the higher heavens where the great life or God resides. Very impressive, one of the most impressive texts. I have described it this way. The Nag Hammadi Library Discovery of Egypt represents the prose of the Gnostics, but the Mandaean scriptures represent the poetry. It's a beautiful collection. The Mandaeans go back to John the Baptist. They see John the Baptist as their great prophet. Or they are a split away group, a splinter group off from that original John the Baptist group. There are different theories, of course, as there always are, about everything under the sun, including the identity of the Mandaeans and their relationship to the John the Baptist movement. Mandaeans practice baptism in rivers of living water, and they found that the Tigris River and the Euphrates River were good substitutes for the Jordan River when they migrated from the Transjordan region to the various locations they are in Iraq, you know, near rivers of water, the Tigris and the Euphrates, where they continued baptizing people by immersion in water. It's what they did, and it's what they continue to do, although many of them have moved out of Iraq these days and live in Worcester, Massachusetts, or somewhere in Michigan, or various locations in Europe and Australia. Like the Tibetans, they have headed west, seeking sanctuary and safety. And a number of their websites have appeared in recent years. Stay tuned for more Spiritual Awakening Radio after these messages. In the Nag Hammadi Library Discovery of Egypt, one of the more advanced spiritual texts is the Book of Allegenus, which means stranger or foreigner, as in a stranger in a strange land. But in ancient times, there were several books attributed to Allegenus. We only had the one until the great discovery called Codex Chacos. And now we have a second book of Allegenus. Most people have only heard about the Gospel of Judas from Codex Tacos or Chacos, but there are several books that were found in that same burial box discovered in a cave in Egypt, referred to as Codex Chacos. This is a reading from what I call Second Allegenus. O Lord God, you who are above all the great eternal realms, you who have neither beginning nor end, bestow upon us a spirit of knowledge for the revelation of your mysteries, to come to a knowledge of ourselves, where we have come from, where we are going, and what we should do in order to live. O God, you who abide in the great eternal realms, hear my voice, have compassion on me, and save me from all evil. Look down upon me and hear me while I'm in this desolate place. Now let your ineffable light shine upon me, your light. Now while I was saying these things, look, a cloud of light surrounded me, 
I was not able to gaze at the light around it, so brightly was it shining. A reading from the book of Second Allegenus, as part of the Codex Chacos discovery. The Syriac Fathers on Prayer and the Spiritual Life represent the writings of another ancient spiritual community that lived between the 4th and 8th centuries AD in the Syriac East, Mesopotamia, Persian Gulf, and various mystics lived in monasteries in Iraq. A couple of readings from this great collection, translated from Syriac Aramaic into English by Sebastian Brock. What wonders has your love affected? When someone is still alive, he has left this world. Though his bodily condition remains with the world's bodily condition, yet his spirit has been raised up towards you, so that for a period of time he is where he knows not, being totally raptured and drawn towards you. A prayer of the mystic John of Apamia, one of the Syrian saints, the Syriac mystics in this wonderful collection. This is from Materius, from that same collection, the Syriac Fathers on Prayer and the Spiritual Life. Blessed are you, O heart, that is luminous, the abode of divinity. Blessed are you, heart, that is pure, which beholds the hidden being. Happy are you, O flesh and blood, the dwelling place of the consuming fire. Happy are you, mortal body, made out of dust, wherein resides the fire that sets the worlds alight. It is truly a matter for wonder and astonishment. The Syriac Fathers on Prayer and the Spiritual Life is translated into English by Sebastian Brock of Oxford University. Well, I hope you've enjoyed today's edition of Spiritual Awakening Radio. Really, to appreciate Gnostic Gospels, one has to become a Gnostic themselves. Seek out a living teacher. Learn from them the sacred names and how to use them. Get guidance and instruction on how to access the third eye, the single eye, to develop singleness of vision and find the light in the darkness. Receive the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, descriptions of the visions that serve as markers along the way. Receive valuable guidance about the sounds of the spheres, the music of the spheres, and make the same journey of ascension that ancient Gnostics did. Become a Gnostic. Go from faith to gnosis, from theory to practice, from religion that's focused on a future tense material kingdom of God to a spiritual kingdom of God available to human beings right now in the present tense, a resurrection that has already come. Instead of expecting a trumpet horn of resurrection of the material body at the end of time, hear the sound of the trumpet which comes from above, drawing the soul up hither into the heavenly realms, whereby it might have its own personal revelation of the heavens, direct personal experience of the heavenly realms. Only then will one truly understand the Gnostic Gospels the goals of those who studied them long ago. To receive links to some of the books I've talked about today, Codex Chakos, the canonical prayer book of the Mandaeans, the book of the knowledge or gnosis of the invisible God, all of these texts that are online, Coptic Apocrypha that I mentioned earlier, the Thomas literature. Send me an email 
Whatever you're interested in, just put that in the subject line or include it in your email. My email address is james at spiritualawakeningradio.com james at spiritualawakeningradio.com or send a text message to this number 207 358 9381 Always great connecting with listeners of this program. A lot of these books are available for free on the World Wide Web if you know where to look. And it is my pleasure to share about these wonderful texts, the neglected, the ignored Gnostic Gospels that don't get much attention. Thanks for listening to today's edition of Spiritual Awakening Radio. You can visit my website also, spiritualawakeningradio.com, where you can access podcasts. There's a donate button at the website, links to social media, Tumblr, Twitter, Facebook, blogs as well. See you next time for another edition of Spiritual Awakening Radio. Mm